uh, the attendance was 15,650. The gate was 6.2 million. The, uh, the fight of the night was Rousey versus Tate. The knockout of the night was Brown. And the submission of the night was Rousey. They all won $75,000 each. Uh, Rousey gets both $75,000 bonuses. Who's got the first question? Kevin Ioli. Chris, I first wanted to go to you and just kind of get your thought on the way the fight finished. Uh, I know you probably didn't want to see it end that way, but if you can just kind of talk about how the fight uh, ended. Uh, yeah, you know, let, is my mic on? All right, there you go. Um, last fight, the one thing that he really, you know, uh, capitalized on was light kicks. So the, the, probably the most important thing that we focused on for this fight camp was stopping his light kicks. Uh, so... Uh, Ray Longo, uh, he's actually broke a guy's leg in, in training using it, what he calls the destruction, which is <laughs> knee, knee on shin. So when he goes to kick, you put your knee on his shin. And I've done it a couple of times in sparring, and guys, you know, they you know, take some time and, you know, about a minute off, they walk around, they're okay, but at least it stops them from kicking you. But to break someone's leg, uh, you know, I've never done that before. And, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, like I said, I, you know, I want to see Anderson Silva get hurt like that. So... Were you consciously trying to do the knee on uh, shin thing tonight then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 100%. Know? You know, I know uh, I didn't want him to try to feel comfortable kicking me all night. If I don't put the knee on his shin, then he's going to kick me and it's going to hurt me. So that's how you check a kick. Okay. And then did, in the first round, you hit him with that right hand. I mean, it was such a short punch. I mean, did you, did you feel like uh, you had a lot of power behind that? And did you think he was gone at that stage? Yeah, uh, I felt, I don't, I don't feel like there's no one in this weight class that could clinch with me. And uh, I was very excited to, I knew he clinched other guys before and he's known for his clinch, but I felt like, uh, I felt real strong in there. And when I hit him with that, I knew he was definitely hurt and I uh, was close to finishing, but he did a good job recovering. Thank you, Chris. Dana, a question for you and then I have one for Rhonda. Um, just can you talk about, you know, Anderson would be 40 years old if he came back, probably the end of his career. Just what he's meant to the UFC and what it meant to you. I know he was a friend of yours to see him in that position and kind of go out like that. And, and, and I'm a big fan, you know. Uh, I, I have been since he came here. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those crazy things. In a million years, you don't ever expect to see that. And, uh, you know, this would be a tough thing to overcome and to come back from at his age. He literally left here and was going straight into surgery. Doc Saunders, who was, uh, who was here tonight watching the fights, was following them. To, he's going to do the surgery uh, probably in the next hour, I guess. Um, you know, Anderson Silva's been amazing. He's, he's one of the greatest of all time, and if not the best ever. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, a shitty way to see him go out, but it's part of the game. And then a question for Rhonda. Um, you know, that was such a great fight and entertaining fight to see. Did you feel, even though you didn't get the arm bar in the first round, that in a way you maybe elevated your game because Misha fought a, a really good fight too and, you know, you showed dominance in a lot of different positions tonight? Um, well, I feel like my, my biggest challenge I have when I'm fighting is I'm kind of uh, in, like a, in a rush, in a hurry, because uh, judo matches are only five minutes long. So I always kind of feel like I have to get it done within that time period. That's what I'd spent over a decade and a half learning. And so um, I felt like after that first round ended, then um, I was still kind of feeling like a little bit antsy because I was in the second round for the first time. And um, when we got to the third round, I really felt like I, I wasn't tired and I was finally learning to, to be patient. And I accepted like, okay, this could go five rounds. You're winning everything so far. Um, really uh, pay attention to what you're doing. Don't just throw for the sake of it. Do it for everything for a reason. And um, it really uh, fo forced me to focus a lot more. And uh, I feel like that's why the, the, the third round was when uh, I finally was able to finish it. For Dana, please, obviously before Anderson left, did you get an opportunity to talk to him at all? Did, did, uh, can you share anything that, that no, might have happened to him? I stayed away from him. You know, let him get the medical attention he needs. He, he was in no shape to talk to anybody. Will you follow up with him? I mean, just the surgery. Will you, will you ask him about his career right away, or will you yeah. just wait and no, wait for a no. while? It, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, he's going to be out for a while with this anyway. He's got a lot of time. You know, that's the last thing on earth. Like, oh, the last time he lost to Wyman, the first thing you think about is a rematch after you get home and, and all that stuff goes down. Thursday, he was ready to go. This one, there's no way. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. He's an incredible human being. He's done amazing things here at the UFC. Maybe 
he'll want to make a comeback. Who knows? But I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I don't want to count him out. And I don't want to count him in. It's just really not the important thing right now. The important thing is he gets his surgery, heals up, and, uh, and then we go from there. And for Chris, please, uh, is there any concern on your part that there would be any doubters that say maybe there's an asterisk next to this, it was an accident, you know, an accidental injury? It sounds like you very consciously, uh, you know, used the technique the way you did. Yeah, I don't think it was accidental when you try to check a kick and uh, it works. Otherwise, <clears throat> if I didn't check the kick, I'd have a big bruised leg right now and he'd, you know, be picking me a probably leg kick. So you try to check kicks and that happens. And for Ron, if I could, please, uh, I would say, no, you said you're, you're pretty much immune to the booze by this point in your life. But are you surprised at all at the reaction, you know, not only that you got pre-fight, but also post-fight as well, that it was such a, a strong kind of hatred for you in there? No, I wasn't surprised at all. I was aware of the role that I was in. And um, this is the, the favorite analogy that I use, is that uh, Batman played the bad guy and let, uh, let Scarface look like the good guy because that's what Gotham City needed at the time. And so... Um, for every fight, I approach it for what's needed at the time. And finally, now that, you know, the emotions are kind of over and you had a little chance to, to let it subside, I mean, any regret at all that you didn't shake the hand? People say it was poor sportsmanship. That's not what we're used to seeing in MMA. Any regret at all, or do you feel like you're just staying true to yourself? I feel like that the day that she formally apologizes to my coach Edmund and Chris Beal and they accept that apology, then I'll consider it shaking her hand again. But um, I, I said up there that... Uh, Boos are not more important to me than my family. If I feel like you've done wrong against my family, you need to make that right before I can shake your hand. It means something to me. It's not something I just throw out there. She's a great, a great fighter. It was an amazing fight that she put out, and she has my respect entirely in that regard. But um, she, she really needs to, to make up a few things that she's done before I will shake her hand. Uh, hey, Chris, congratulations. Uh, you're to your far left. You probably can't see me. Um, there, there was a lot of confusion, right? Sorry. Oh, far right. I thought you said left. Struggled with that. Oh. Uh, you're, you're, uh, there was a lot of confusion, right, you know, at the end of the fight uh, w with exactly what happened, but you had raised your hand right away. Did, did, did you know exactly what had happened, or did, or did you just see the referee waving it off? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> even after the first, I, I checked the first kick, and uh, it was knee on shin again, I, again. I mean, uh, for the first time, and then when he, when he threw it again, I mean, he threw everything into both those kicks, and it's going to hurt him a lot, you know. And I knew uh, I knew I hurt him with it, and I knew, uh, but I, didn't, I wasn't sure it broke until I seen him put his foot back down to the mat and him collapse down, and then I knew right away it was over. What, what's that moment like? What's, what's going through your head when you know you did that again? Uh, it's over. I won. It's awesome. And uh, then, 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 you, then I'm like, oh, he broke his leg, and I feel bad for him. And just lastly, you made a lot about the last fight. It was pretty much right away you started thinking about fighting Anderson again. I mean, you guys had the next fight within six days. Uh, you already know your assignment coming up this time. You got Vitor Belfort. What do you think of that matchup, and how, how long do you give yourself before you start to, you know, really preparing for him? No, I think it's a great matchup, a totally different opponent than Anderson Silva, so it's nice to move on. And uh, I'm excited for that challenge. Okay. I have a few questions, Misha. Um, first and foremost, thank you for so many years of, of great fights. It's really been terrific watching you. Um, I am curious, though, you know, wh what do you want to do next, and, and how do you feel about your evolution as a fighter? You've you know, had a lot of the same you know, trainers for a while. Do you, do you feel that maybe you want to make a change and do something different moving forward? First of all, I'm going to apologize because I'm not in a very talkative mood. But um, I don't really know, honestly. You know, um, I think that, you know, everyday people take victories in climbing small hills, and I picked Mount Everest, <laughs> you know? I didn't quite make it to the top, but I gave it my best effort, and um, I'm going to try to walk away as best I can with my head held high, and, um, you know, just I, I just need some time to, to really let this, this soak in. You know, I'm not making any rash decisions, and, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but... Um, you know, just going to make the best of it. So, okay, I'll let you have that time. Then. Rhonda, I would, I would say your inventiveness tonight with your jiu-jitsu was really kind of a standout thing in my mind watching you. Um, was that something that you knew you'd really need, you know, different positions and different ways to finish the fight with Misha? Um, well, for the last two camps, I've been training with uh, Henner here on Gracie, and um, we focused a lot on being on the worst-case scenarios 
And um, I trained a lot being on the bottom and um, being in you know, places where I traditionally would never be in a judo match. And so I really tried to fill those holes. And um, I really think that helped in the positions I was in and still like doing the most damage, even though it would be considered a bad position. And it really um, um, gave me a whole lot more confidence and stuff. And uh, the veteranness, I think it comes out. I improvise when I fight. And so the, um, the better my opponent is and the more that they, they really push me to have answers for what I do, the more it, it, it causes me to really um, innovate and improvise more. And so uh, Misha did an amazing job tonight, and um, she helped me to really show more of what I'm capable of. Nice. Uriah, certainly there was a lot of talk after your last fight. Dana said a lot of things. He said you didn't have, you know, paraphrasing, but, but, but a fighter's heart, and, you know, you weren't a fighter at the time. I'm curious... Killer Instinct. Yeah, Killer Instinct, thank you very much. Big difference. <laughs> way around. Um, killer Instinct, you're right. Uh, what that did to motivate you and how much you felt those words coming into the octagon tonight? Um, those words definitely hit. But, um, <clears throat> sorry, it was, it was how you took them, you know, and for me personally, it was just going back and understanding why I didn't have those mentality of, of the mentality he was speaking about. And, you know, at some point I was like, man, how am I trying to be that person? I'm not. And, you know, a couple of people told me, dude, you're not that person. So it was like, okay, how do I handle that? And still go in the cage, you know, when someone's trying to kill me and <laughs> try to return a favor without trying to kill him. So it was just a head case that I had to handle. And I just had the right support group. You know, I had my coach, Clayton. Uh, hires really helped me. I uh, stayed in contact with Chael, too. And just surrounded myself in that positive aspect to uh, help me come out on top. But, you know, those words definitely did something good. And uh, I'm glad you said them. Thank you. And lastly, for you, Travis, um, after you won that fight, I had I admitted, I said, I did not expect that from you. I did not expect that kind of a finish. I'm wondering now, you know, in so many of your fights, you've been the underdog. That secret is out now. You're not going to be the underdog probably moving forward. And, and how will that change your approach to fights? Because it seems like that sort of buoys you going into things, knowing that people don't expect you to do great things. Yeah, I'm only the, uh, the underdog in, in Vegas eyes and, and maybe... You know, some of the fans that don't really understand, maybe. But, uh, you know, I'm confident in my skills. And, and uh, I've been saying that from day one, is that I'm an MMA fighter. I don't have any special background in wrestling or striking or anything like that. And so I've been, I've been blessed to be able to train with some of the best and become a, great, a good MMA fighter. Great. Well, thank you. And Dana, what did you just hang up? That's my last question. Rousey versus McMahon. February. That's the headliner. And that's a fast turnaround. She goes right back into camp. Your thoughts on that, Rhonda? Um, Dana actually approached me about this before this fight. And uh, I wanted to stay focused on this one, but I'd taken such a long time off that I feel like I, I want to fight again soon. I don't want to sit on the shelf. And um, I'm in the best shape of my life now, so I think it'd, uh, it'd be the perfect time to just go back to back. I'm ready to get back into it. I'm still hungry and this is what I love to do. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have an, a good, another good show for you guys very soon. But uh, at least I have some time to go Christmas shopping and stuff first and I'll, I'll, get, I'll take like a week or two. <laughs> uh, I'll try to rest a little bit, but this is what I love to do. I'm meant to do it and I'm, I feel like I could fight again tonight. Great. So Thank Kat, you. Kat Zingano is here tonight too and uh, she goes back into training in March, right? So start training again in March. Uh, question for Dana. Hopefully stay healthy and we're going to do that fight. <laughs> uh, you just mentioned February. Do we know which card? Or the 22nd. You... 22nd, okay. Here um, in Vegas. The co-main event will be Evans and uh, Cormier. Okay. Um, I was wondering what, if, <clears throat> what you thought of uh, Chris Lieben kind of going out the way he did tonight. And, um, yeah, just your thoughts on that. Mine? Yeah. Um, yeah, Chris is, a, Chris is a tough guy. You know, I know how bad uh, he, he wanted to come back and how bad he wanted that fight. The perfect fight for him with Uriah. And, uh, you know, you know how tough Chris is. And for, tough to, for Chris to quit on the stool, he was hurt. This fight was kind of a do-or-die situation for these guys, it seemed like. Um, was there consideration, given the fact that he'd been in the, you know, he'd fought 22 times, um, of giving him a moment to basically, you know, to commemorate him a little bit, if he did go out like this or if he went out, if he lost the fight, to give him a moment? Because um, it seemed like there was time to do it, but 
there was nothing that kind of happened there. Well, I mean, the guy's not making the decision right there on, on the spot. And, and, and I don't think that there's ever a situation where, you know, yeah, you look at it before the fight happens and say, oh, these guys both need to win this fight. But you never know what's going to happen in a fight. A fight could be a knockdown, drag them out war that, you know, at the end of the day, you have so much respect for both guys, you wouldn't want to cut either guy. So I, I, don't, I don't really look at it that way. I wait and see what happens. And I mean, it's like, it's like, um, uh, what was the fight earlier tonight? Um, Bobby Volker, you know, he's 0-3 right now. He's not going anywhere. Took the Robbie Lawler fight on short notice, and, and tonight he fought like a, you know, he was busted up, and he keeps moving forward. He keeps trying to win. We don't cut guys like that. And the last one is for uh, Dustin. Um, it seemed like you had a lot of animosity towards uh, the, you, Diego for not making weight. Like, how much did that fuel you kind of going into this fight and carry over to tonight? That's a good question, man. Uh, you know, I really, I really work hard, you know, to stay in great shape, make weight. You know, I take this very serious. So that showed me that, you know, if he's slacking there, where else is he slacking, you know? So I, I was already confident in the fight. I feel like the best Diego could have showed up and I would have still won. But uh, actually on stage, I was so mad because before we walked on stage to weigh in, he told me he was going to stab me in the neck, actually. And they, and they had to separate us. Like, he, he was, yeah, the guy's nuts, man. That's why I was so upset. Uh, for Dana? Dana, um, was there any uh, inkling as, as, far, as far as why uh, Diego was not able to make the weight? Why didn't Diego make weight? As far as uh, there's a story going around about a possible car crash or whatever. About his contract? No, a car accident. Oh, car accident. Rumor, I guess. I talked to him after the fight, and he told me a lot of personal things that, you know, it just sounds to me like he needs to get his head together. and You know, he needs to make some... Uh, serious decisions in his life if he wants to continue to be a professional fighter. And he knows it, so we'll see what he does. And uh, for Chris, uh, uh, when you're uh, with your team getting ready for, for uh, the rematch against Anderson Silva, um, did it ever cross your mind that, that age could be a factor for him, as in maybe he's just as mentally sharp as he ever was, but maybe his body would, wouldn't perform as, perhaps as fast as, as he would like to? Or would that in any, in any way work its way into a strategy? It, he never si uh, showed any signs of slowing down, so I couldn't afford to think that because he's getting older, uh, it was going to be the fight where it starts showing. So I didn't want to. Um, I expected the best Anderson Silva, and I thought he actually looked great tonight. You know, I thought uh, f physically, I think he's looked better. Uh, he, he looked the best that I've ever seen him. Hi, I have two questions for Dana. Dana, the first one is: Do you think Anderson's accident? Was the worst accident ever in UFC history? Um, well, it's happened before. It did happen to somebody else in the UFC. It happened to Corey Hill. Um, but yeah, I would say yes. How Both is Corey Hill and Anderson. There's nothing, there, there's nothing worse than breaking your leg like that. Well, there are worse things, but it's the worst thing that ever happened here. How is, do you think it's going to affect the relation of the Brazilian people and the UFC since it was broadcasted by the biggest television in Brazil, Hedge Global. How, how do I think it'll what? It, what, what, what will it do? Uh, it's going to affect like the big accident of the most uh, brilliant guy for Brazil. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it's a bad night. Uh, you know, like you said, Chris saying, you don't, you don't want to, it's not the way you want to see a guy go out, but it happened, you know? I mean, it happened here. And as far as it happened in, you know, in the sport, it happened in a basketball game last year. Guy's leg broke the exact same way in a basketball game. It's just, we're human beings and freak accidents happen and it sucks when they do. I hope I answered your question. I tried. A question for Dustin? Over here. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Uh, just overall, what do you think, of, what did you think of your performance tonight? You know, um, I think the way we prepared the fight unfolded exactly how we thought. He was going to come out throwing big overhands and maybe look for a takedown. And, uh, you know, he, he has history of slowing down in his fights. And then when he misses weight, you know, I just assumed he's gonna, his cardio is going to be even worse. So, uh, you know, I, I think I performed well. I wanted to stay off the fence, stay in the middle of the cage, use my boxing, stay long. And, and I think I did that pretty well. I got into a couple of brawls with him. But, uh, you know, that's just how I fight. You know, a guy comes at you and, and touches you, uh, you know, I, I don't really back down too much. So, but working on it, man, trying to, trying to make the right choices in there. 
You've only lost to top contenders now. Uh, who do you think is next to your division, or is there any opponent that interests you? You know, uh, uh, Korean Zombie beat me, and, and I really lost that fight. I was prepared, and, and uh, he beat me. He beat me that night. But uh, my other loss is to Cub Swanson, and I took the fight on short notice. I cut 30 pounds that week, flew to London, and, and you know, never felt the feeling I had that night of the fight ever before in my life. And uh, it was just a bad feeling. Uh, I felt like I shouldn't have been going out there and fighting. And uh, I would like a rematch with Cub Swanson. You know, uh, I think I deserve to be 100% and, and fight him. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to get back in the gym and whatever UFC wants. And then just a question for Jim Miller as well. Uh, you had the arm bar locked pretty, pretty tight to look from the beginning, but it took a little while for him to tap. Did you know that you had it locked up? Um, I, I knew that it was, I had control, um, and I didn't want to expend too much energy and, and possibly let him slip out. So I was kind of just waiting for him to try to readjust to, to slide out of it. Um, and when he pulled his elbow out just a little bit more, it, you know, um, tightened it up, and I was able to just put pressure on it and get the submission. I mean, just one last one for Chris Weidman. Uh, once again, congratulations. Uh, Vitor Thank Belfort you. is next in line. Uh, where do you feel he is most dangerous, and where does he pose most problems? Uh, again, two completely different fighters than Ansa Silva. He's you know very explosive, strong, uh, very experienced, uh, good on the ground and on the feet. He's he's going to be a great challenge for me, and I'm excited for that fight. <coughs> Thank you. Hi. Um, for Uriah and the ladies, I write for Home and Garden Television. I wanted to ask, um, and Uriah too for that matter, I wanted to ask, what was your favorite room in the Ultimate Fighter's house? What's that? Your favorite room in the house. Uh, I would have to say the kitchen. Because <laughs> it's food, man. We needed food. <laughs> the kitchen's definitely my favorite. Rhonda? Uh, the I didn't like anything about that house. <laughs> don't, get, don't get Rhonda going on the ultimate fighter. That's all I need right now. And for each of you, um, could you talk about your own gym in your house, where you work out in your house, if you have a, your own gym or whatever you do to work out in the house? I don't have a gym in my house. What? I, I, have, like, little, I have like little balls that I hang all around my, my house. So, like, um, when you walk past so many rooms that you go into, you have to, like, shadow box at them. Yeah. And I have different little things. I have one, like, a double-end one. So, it's like my whole house is kind of gym-ish, but there's no, like, gym section. There's just, if, if you're walking through the house, you're going to hit your head onto something if you don't weave out of the way. You know what I mean? So. Some of those are metals, too, so. <laughs> Tell us about your vacation this summer. How was that? Did you go anywhere interesting or? Uh... I don't really have a gym in my house, but um, you know, I, I I went to hang out with her one time, and uh, I like the concept she had. It was just balls and everything everywhere. And... Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, training balls that are hanging. I meant to say, hanging balls in her house. In my house, there's balls in your face. I can't help it. <laughs> So clearly I was the only one that was not in the gutter. I'm sorry. But it was an interesting concept because, you know, I stayed there and I couldn't get to the kitchen without fighting something. Headline of the story is Uriah likes balls. <laughs> this thing's, right, on, I'm done. This thing's I'm on, done. on Fox for crying out loud. Done, Let's I'm get done. some other questions going here. Uh, question for Chris Weidman. Uh, Chris, I want to ask you uh, to your left. I want to ask you about uh, the first round of this fight compared to the first round of the first fight because I think they had similarly favorable outcomes for you on the ground. What are your thoughts on the first round of this fight compared to that first round with Anderson? Anything different or did you feel like it was a mirror blueprint of what could have been uh, another uh, alternate path to victory for you? Uh, you know... Uh, you know, last time I took him down right away, and it was more, uh, I, was, I wasn't in his guard. You know, he wasn't able to get his guard locked, so it was more just passing and uh, ground and pound, um, looking for uh, submission. I, I took that, I went for the leg lock, and he got back up to his feet, but I felt like I still dominated that fight. And then uh, for this one, it was, you know, I took him down pretty fast. I, well, I hit him with the, uh, the right hook, and he went down, and I was trying to finish the fight, and I ended up in his guard, and I felt like I was landing some decent ground and pound, and 
that was really it. Do you think maybe that's a, an element of the story of both fights that gets lost a little bit because of the unusual outcome that you had that kind of success? Yeah, probably. Uh, question for Misha Tate. Uh, Misha, despite the loss tonight, uh, obviously with your run on the Ultimate Fighter and particularly the fight tonight, you really got a fantastic reception from the fans, um, even in defeat. I think that probably indicates there's a lot of momentum from fans in wanting to, to see you, uh, you know, f fight again. Is that a, a positive you can take away from tonight, or is it anything you can, you can really think about? Yeah, you know what? I mean, just because I didn't perform the way I had hoped doesn't mean I appreciate the fans any less. You know, the fans, they're seriously awesome, and I can't thank them enough for the support. And I can't apologize enough for, for letting, you know, letting everyone down. Uh, finally, a question for Travis Brown. Uh, Travis, uh, despite the incredible, incredible comeback you had against uh, Alistair Overeem over here to your left, uh, do you think it took a dominating victory uh, over a top contender like Josh Barnett tonight to really solidify you know, your place in the division, everything you knew you could do, now everybody understands? Um, you know, in this sport, and especially with the guys that I've been going up against, uh, a win's a win. You know, dominant or, you know, decision or whatever. It, it I mean, it de definitely doesn't hurt, you know, going in there and getting, getting a win like that. And, um, you know, this is, uh, this was expected, though, by our camp, you know, and, and, I, and I think uh, a lot of people that really know who I am as a fighter, as an athlete, and as a person, expected that out of me and I don't like letting people down. I've had a couple disappointments in, in the UFC in two of my fights, which was against Chet Congo and Rob Broughton. And to feel that disappointment come from the UFC has really helped me change, change my, my life in general and really, really focus on my career. All the rest of my life to go out and have fun. But right now it's, it's time to work. Question for Dana. Uh, Dana, I would like to know, uh, do you have an idea when this fight between Weidman and Vitor is going to happen, if it's going to be in 4th of July or something like that in Vegas? I, I don't know yet. Yeah, we, we got to figure that out. Don't know. And I also want to know uh, your thoughts on, like, the walkout. Like, when Anderson was going into the arena, you know, the walkout, he seems like a little nervous. He was just acting, like, a little different this time. Did you think that he was kind of saying goodbye or something like that? He was kind of nervous just want to see I don't think so I mean I, again I these guys fight I don't they, they they know about these things better than I do but you know I, I don't disagree with you I think that he did look different I think he uh you know I think there's more pre when we talk about pressure there's more pressure when you're in the position Anderson was in tonight than there is when you're walking in there with the belt but what the hell do I know Chris can you talk about the difficulty of defending the belt versus fighting for it this time now that you went through all that preparation yourself as the man um, moving forward for the next fight. Is it, is it a lot different? No, it was kind of the, the same thing, you know, same, same type of preparation, uh, no big changes. The only difference is that for my last fight, I, you know, everybody kind of knows what I went through already. I had the two surgeries, Hurricane Sandy. Uh, there was <clears throat> it wasn't the best timing for me to be having a title fight against Anderson Silva for sure. This fight, there was, it was perfect timing. There was, there was no, uh, no question marks going into this fight. I knew I was going to win. I felt great out there, to be honest. I felt, I felt like uh, I saw everything on my feet. I felt like there was nothing uh, he was going to be able to surprise me with. So it was a good night. Great. And Rhonda, were you, were you hurt at all during this fight? Um, and looking back on it, honestly, you know, given the filming that you did and everything, do you think that affected you know, your, your ability in this fight? Was it a more difficult fight because of those distractions? Well, I'm obviously not hurt since I'm doing a, another fight very soon. And... Um, and yeah, going and doing uh, those movies did make it much more difficult, which I did on purpose. <coughs> I, I don't do this for a living to do things that are easy. I need to keep finding ways to challenge myself. And that's what I needed to do to make this fight more of a challenge for me. So you got another one? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to wrap this thing up with, uh, with Vitor Belfort. Vitor, what's your question? First of all, I want to congratulate all you guys. Amazing show. It's so good to sit down and see from outside, you know, and I want to thank Chris Wademan to accept my challenge, and, and I just want to say, whenever it's settled done, I'm ready. 
going back to the gym Monday. Congratulations for you guys. And I'm looking forward for my next challenge. Cool. Cool. <laughs> did you have a question, Kevin? I, I did. We'll make um, this the last one. I just want to, one for Dustin and one for Rhonda. Uh, Dustin, can you, what, you said he had a knife. I mean, where, where, you know, what was that? What were no, you no, talking no. about? Were you trying to stab you? What was going on there? No, no, he, he didn't have a knife. He, uh, we were in line waiting to walk out for weigh-ins, and he comes up to me and he says, you stare at me like this again, I cut your neck, then what you going to do? Okay. So when we got on stage, <laughs> when we got on stage and we made weight, I'm like, you know. That was, uh, okay, that was Yeah, I, I wasn't action. mad about him missing weight. I mean, that sucks. But uh, the, him stabbing me in the neck, you know, that's not cool. And then, hey, Rhonda, if, if I could ask you straight in front of you. Um, you. You referenced the movies, and that was unbelievable. You know, you went through the TV show and then two movies to, in, to come in to do this. What was the most difficult thing about doing that? Like, you know, what made it the hardest on you, all that that you did preparing for this fight? I think the hardest thing was um, being alone a lot of the time. You know, I was in Bulgaria for eight weeks, and I brought out uh, Chris Spiel and, and Wooten and Marina for short stints, but I was mostly by myself. I had to be really um, entirely self-motivated. Um, my coach Edmund was um, helping Victor Chinian train for uh, a title fight, so, um, so yeah, I just had to, on my own, wake up at 4 a.m., make myself run up the stairs, <clears throat> and we'd film all day, 16 hours, and on my own, I had to just be like, all right, drive into the mountains, let's run up the mountains, like... I, it, it was the hardest part was staying self-motivated and staying creative and finding ways to get training in despite the um, less than ideal training camp circumstances. And, and finally, you know, Victor Ortiz, I know, was over there filming. Did, were you able to at least throw hands with him and did that help you at all, you know, working with a guy, a high-level boxer like that? Um, me, and, me and Victor did keep each other mutually mo mo motivated a lot of the time. So, like, uh, if we were running up through the mountains, he'd run up and um, we'd scream next to me, and still, and still, like, while running up the mountain. And um, what's it called? Uh, we would go to the, the boxing gym. He set up the place we could go. And uh, we mostly did, like, distance things. So he would try to get away from me, and I would try to um, be able to clinch with him without getting hit, stuff like that. Um, but, yeah. We, it, even if he was just on one side of the gym uh, hitting a bag and I was like, you know, a few feet away wrestling around with some Bulgarian dudes, it was just nice to have company in the gym. It's, it's hard to show up somewhere alone and really just kind of force yourself in that environment, especially, you know, I kind of stand out a little bit. And some of these guys are kind of big and gnarly. And it's just, it's nice to be like, hey, yo, Victor, if anyone, you know, I, I, I didn't feel like I was going to get, you know, if anything bad was going to happen because I had someone like Victor Ortiz having my back just in case. Sure. Yeah, yeah, he's okay. Let me see, we got transported. Yeah, he got transported. Uh, T-Bow, Barnett, and Silva all got transported. But I don't know, uh, you know. Sure he's all right or I would have heard differently. Thank you guys very much. Happy New Year. Have a good night.